Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 1.1, where we're going to look at the different types of matter. There, there are elements, which include diatomics, which are probably new, compounds, homogeneous mixtures, and heterogeneous mixtures. I want to remind you, you should write down everything that I write down and the stuff that's here, unless it's clearly a joke. So let's hop right into it. Types of matter. Uh-oh. There are pure substances, and substance is a fancy word for stuff. So there's pure stuff, and then there are mixtures. So if you're 100% pure cowboy, you are pure, um, and mixtures are blends of properties. Elements are pure. Every atom of an element has the same properties of other atoms of the same element. So their properties are the same. Okay. And helium in Indiana is still light clear and makes your voice sound funny, just like helium in Illinois does. Some elements are diatomic. Now you know that. You know we don't breathe O, we breathe O2. So what diatomic means is that each of these guys, when they're on their own, make a whoops, make exactly two. Great, and I wrote three. Good. Glad I have my counting skills. Br2, I2, and F2. So these are diatomic. You will never see them any other way when they're by themselves. Now you know there's H2O, that's water, and that's okay. It has to be bonded to something. So in this case, it's bonded to hydrogen, so it doesn't need to be O2. Compounds are pure as well. So compounds are pure. Even though they have multiple parts, the combination is pure, like H2O. Okay. So every sample of water will have identical intensive properties to any other. And again, an intensive property is one that doesn't change. So like they won't have the same weight, but they'll have the same, it'll be colorless or something like that. H2O and NaCl. So for example, we know that hydrogen is H2 and oxygen is O2. And water has new properties. Okay, So compounds have identical intensive properties to any other of the same type, of course. So we know if you have a um, f if you have a fire and you put water on it, it goes out. If you add oxygen to a fire, it gets bigger. And if you add hydrogen to a fire, it explodes. Boom! Ah! Okay. Water is totally new properties than the other ones. NaCl, sodium in your hand is toxic. If you eat pure sodium, it will kill you and draw butterflies. I'm not making that up. Chlorine is in mustard gas, so and chlorine, like chlorine in pools, you know, it smells and burns your nose a little bit. Chlorine by itself, if you breathe pure chlorine, which is not what's in pool, but if you breathe pure chlorine, it will actually react with the water in your lungs. So pretend these are lungs. And when the gas gets in there, what happens is it turns your lungs into hydrochloric acid and they dissolve. But salt, mmm, yummy, 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 yummy. Mixtures have a blend of properties. That means every original part is still there. Okay? So a salad, mmm, tastes like carrots to me, mmm, and lettuce, oh, and blue cheese everywhere. Salt water, still tastes wet, still tastes salty. Blend of properties for a mixture. Blood also is a blend of the hemoglobin that carries the oxygen and the stuff that makes your blood clot. Why can't I think of what that is? Someone should tell me that. There's your extra credit point for the pod quiz. What's the stuff that makes your blood clot? Shame on me for not being able to remember that. What is that? It's not, And coagulant is not going to work. There's something. Mm, it's what makes you uh, hemophiliac, and I can't think of what they're missing. Homogeneous mixtures. Every sample is the same. The prefix homo means same. So homogeneous mixture. This is also known as a solution. Most any state of matter for a mixture is possible. So I can have a solid in a solid, and that is called an alloy. And that can be homogeneous mixture. I can have a solid in a liquid, like salt water, and that's just usually called a solution. So I can have a liquid in a liquid, and like you can mix different liquids together and they will blend. And that is called miscible. Ooh. And then I can have a gas in a liquid. That's how we carbonate our drinks. And I can have a gas in a gas. Every state of matter is possible except for solid and gas. Ging. <laughs> oh, I guess I just wrote that down, didn't I? Well, aren't you glad you don't have to write that down twice? And alloy, as I said, is a solid and a oops, oops, solid and a solid. Heterogeneous mixture. The samples are different. It's usually obvious. 
um, living things have cells. So if you look at their cells, you see how, oh, this would be heterogeneous because I can see this part and I can see that part and I can see that part. Oh, look, it's a little endoplasmic reticulum here. And, oh, look, it's the cell wall and blah, 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 blah. You can see there's different parts. You can see there's different people, different colors. It would be a heterogeneous mixture. Is an element compound homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture and why? Iron. Iron is an element which is pure. And those are the easiest because they're on the periodic table. Air is a mixture of um, mostly nitrogen and oxygen, a little bit of CO2. But it mixes up so quickly that if you tried really hard and you went <sighs> and tried to only breathe in your CO2, you can't because it mixes so quickly. So air is a homogeneous mixture. Rust. Um, rust it has new properties, you know iron rust, so it has new properties, and it is pure. It is a compound. 14 karat gold. 14 karat gold is a mixture of gold, gold is AU, and zinc, zinc is ZN. Zinc is hard and strong, gold is bright and shiny, and together they make an alloy. An alloy is a whoops, homogeneous mixture. Classified by the picture. Look, this is a pure substance, right? They're all little black dots. This is a pure substance. I guess I'm going to say it's pure. It's an element. These right here, oh, look, this is an element. And this is where I get to introduce diatomic element as a molecule. This guy right here is a diatomic element because they're both the same. So this is a mixture of a diatomic element and a, see how these guys are different but touching? That's a compound. Okay, this is the exact same thing as the other one. This one, this is an element. This is a different element. So it's a mixture of two elements. This is a pure element. This is an element, because it's not touching anything. An element not touching anything. An element not touching anything. So this is a mixture of three elements. This is a compound. This is a compound. See how they're all the same? So this is a pure compound. Black dot, white dot, black dot, white dot, black dot, white dot. This is a mixture. And it is a homogeneous mixture because the mixing is even. Now my other mixtures, I did not say what they were. This is a hetero mixture because every sample is not exactly the same. This is a hetero mixture because even though it kind of looks neat, if I take a sample from the top, it's very different from the samples on the bottom. Do review. Hey, that means we're almost done. That means I've got to put my tunes back on. Oops. Bonds make molecules. That means either going to be a diatomic element or a compound. And that's what's going to happen. So mixtures have blended properties, but compounds have new properties. So blended or new. Separate mixtures by physical properties, such as, well, you can see that they're different. That's it. So I will say this for the first of many times. Toodles. <laughs>